1978. Melvin Weinberg and Lady Evelyn Knight have been arrested for fraud and are facing three years in prison when the FBI presents them with an offer. Come work with us, counting politicians and others into committing crimes for providing favors in exchange for cash, and you get probation. In 2013, director David O. Russell directs in a film detailing many of these same events through a very different lens. Once again, never trust the plunging neckline or anyone wearing a 70s comb over because American Hustle was inspired by a true story. Welcome to True Crime for Cinephiles. This is Inspired by a True Story, a podcast devoted to keeping artists honest, including con artists. We will discuss the overall details of the actual crimes, then I'll review the film on its own, how much of that is true, and how much was Hollywood magic. It's more about the true crime than it is the movie. I'm Aaron Peterson, an accredited film critic for the Hollywood Outsider podcast and website, and devoted true crime follower. Joining me today are my fellow film critics and true crime devotees, John Davenport. I, damn it. I already made this awkward. Still don't have an opening. All right, Amanda Sink. Hello, hello. You see how that works? Why don't you do like hi hi? No, that's not as it's not as cool. Yeah, it really isn't. I it's really Amanda's thing. And then if I started stealing <laughs> it from her, then she's the one who's awkward and it's just a whole yeah. it just and spirals then it's worse. Aren't you yeah. Spanish? Couldn't you say something in Spanish that would Could you say hola hola? Yeah. <laughs> say hola hola. That still steals steals your thunder. I'm I mean I'm not here no, to take the wind out of your it sails. It actually makes my thunder way cooler, way better. Always better than hi, how you doing? Because it's like, well, now I gotta answer that question and you know, instead of moving on. Instead of telling everyone that you're not doing well, you yeah. just say, I'm tired or I'm okay. What if I tell the truth? You know what? I just lost my third toe. This is a really, really bad week. and <laughs> I want to know what happened with your third toe <laughs> no, I'm specifically. Hobbling, hobbling around. I still want to know what happened to the first and second one, actually. Well, that those are a whole other stories. See, now I have to answer all those questions. If you just would have said, hola, hola, done. Dunsies. No more problems. I could be like, let's get with the murder. Yeah, you could you could do that. You could do that. Okay, but there's no murder this time, so that would be uh, yeah, awkward I was gonna yet say. again. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, l- let's get with the con artists. <laughs> and I should tell people that are listening, as we go, we will do other movies. So, I mean, you know, there are other films that we'll do that were inspired by true stories that it's interesting to dig into. They don't always have to be murder. It's just more fun. But I like the idea that we're just doing a little bit of everything as opposed to things that are just about murder. I like the idea that we're doing just anything that's inspired by a true story. That makes it very cool. You just like that we did. It's an Amy Adams movie and it's the best she's ever looked in her entire career. Like, okay. All right. Not that she ever looks bad. I'm not saying she's ever. I was going to say, you made it sound like she nope. looks bad. Um, big Amy Adams fam going all the way back to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So there you go. Mm. Yep, 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 yep. The thing I do appreciate is that everything had to have a neckline all the way down to her belly button. <laughs> it's true. Even Christian Bale had to have, had to have a neckline. <laughs> had to have a plunging neckline. Yeah, Everyone. well, I mean, that's the 70s, right? I was uh, going to say, yeah. that's the time. Early that's, 80s. That was late the vibe. 70s, late 70s, early 80s, yeah. Yeah, that, just getting outside of uh, disco into that little dark zone between disco and and modern pop, uh, it's just uh, a, a good time. I mean, really, we should go back to those comb overs. Uh, I think I could rock one of those pretty no. well. No, mm-mm, we shouldn't. Mm-mm. No, we shouldn't. No, no we shouldn't. No. That thing was a work of art. And Christian Bale shaving his head that way just to make it work was amazing. The fact that they put so much work into hiding the fact that you're going bald, I find that fascinating. <laughs> I mean, it's just so much effort. Why? To, do you want the tips? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. What do you got to do to make this work? Because <laughs> times are coming, man. I got to prep. So American Hustle. You guys are big fans of this movie? This was my first time watching it. I like this movie more than Catch Me If You Can. Mm, no. Speaking of con artists, I do. I'm just letting you know, I do. Hmm. I still like Catch Me If You Can a bit better than this, but this was really good. This was my second time sitting down and watching it. I realized that that's almost a crime to not revisit this movie more often. Yeah, the the we'll get into it later, much later there in the show, but how they paint Jennifer Lawrence's character is really kind of not cool especially with the true story. 
It's fun in the movie as a movie. Yeah, she's she's definitely a character in the movie. Yeah, she's a character. Well, she's great in the movie. I'm not gonna. I'm, no, no, no. Yeah, I know she is. The, her character is like freaking wild, though. <laughs> right. Yes. She's very extreme. Very extreme. Not as extreme as that comb over, though. Nothing comes close. To that hair. <laughs> Nothing in this movie touches that hair, except maybe Bradley Cooper's perm. That is magical. That perm is magical. And I like that they call it out in the movie too. Like, yeah, I know you I know you put little curlers in there. Uh-huh. All you need is that perm, and now you gotta just like, you know, burn down the sides of his head, uh, and then you got yourself a Texas tailgate going. Oh my god. <laughs> well, we should probably start getting into this. As of this recording, American Hustle is streaming on Paramount Plus or available on demand to rent, but that's always subject to change. Uh, just letting you know where we can you can find it right now. American Hustle featured an all-star cast of Jennifer Lawrence, Jeremy Renner, Louis C.K. before he was canceled, and starred mainly Christian Bale and Amy Adams as two con artists who are blackmailed into working for the FBI and a sting intended to bring down politicians and the like by posing as representatives for a chic interested in investment opportunities in New Jersey. It was directed by David O. Russell and received numerous Academy Award nominations, including for Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress, Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Picture, which is pretty fun. Everybody but Bradley Cooper basically got a nomination, so that had a sting. Ha, <laughs> I said sting. All right, well, new episodes are released every two. Nobody gets that joke? Nobody? Nobody? I get the joke. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Somewhere out there, somebody's laughing for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just not John. <laughs> new episodes are released every two weeks of Inspired by a True Story. It can be found wherever you listen to podcasts or at the hollywoodoutsider.com or inspired by a true story.com all lead to the same place and you can hear episodes early if you support the show at patreon.com slash the hollywood outsider film and true crime fans like are always debating how true their true crime is it's time to investigate american hustle melvin weinberg was born in the bronx on december 4th 1924 and mel was a con man which coincidentally makes sense he would eventually be responsible for the convictions of a gaggle of U.S. congressmen. Mel Weinberg ran a scam, which consisted of this. A person would offer a fee of $1,000 or more to Mel, and in response, Mel would use his connections with London Associates to solicit large loans for these desperate individuals, people with poor credit or shady history. Mel would then report back that he could not secure the loans for these individuals, but that he would have to keep his retainer fee. It was a non-refundable fee, you understand. Evelyn Knight was born in Watford, England on December 5th, 1942. Yes, she actually was English. She met Mel Weinberg, 17 years her senior, at a Long Island party sponsored by the British government, and shortly after, she began working with Mel on the London Associates scam, introducing her as Lady Evelyn Knight one of the richest women in the world. They were arrested in 1977 on charges of fraud and conspiracy. In 1978, John Good of the FBI created the Abscam operation. Melvin and Evelyn make a plea deal with the FBI, and this deal would come to be known as Abscam. It's a crude reference to the fact that they would use an Arabian sheik as bait to lure unsuspecting people into criminal activity. Their deal concluded that if they assisted them on this two-year operation, they would walk away with probation. So Melvin created a fake company, Abdul Enterprises. In it, FBI agents would pose as Arab sheiks. Weinberg set up this company with a $1 million account provided by the FBI, established at the Chase Manhattan Bank. The intent was to use this money to entice nefarious types to commit crimes like forgery or fraud in an effort for financial gain. One of the forgers being investigated suggested that they should invest in New Jersey casinos. And that is when Abscam changed. They began soliciting politicians such as Camden, New Jersey Mayor Angelo Arichetti. The Abscam operation targeted a range of individuals involved in political corruption. While the primary focus was on public officials, the operation also involved individuals associated with organized crime. The undercover FBI agents, posing as wealthy Middle Eastern businessmen, approached these targets with offers of financial assistance in exchange for political favors. Some of the key figures involved in the operation included 
Anthony Amoroso. Amoroso was an associate of the Gambino crime family, and he introduced Weinberg to individuals who could be potential targets for the operation. The fictional character of Sheikh Abdullah was created as part of the undercover operation to pose the wealthy Arab Sheikh interested in making these investments in the United States. Angela was the first politician to get on board, and he was instrumental in rounding up the others. He believed he could expedite this investment opportunity if they could use excess cash to get government officials and members of Congress to offer favors for money, to grease the wheels, if you will. In order to assist the prosecution, each investigation had detailed accounting of the money handoff, as well as was videotaped, and each politician was tried separately. Lawyers for the accused claimed this was an entrapment yet they were convicted regardless. In August 1980, the New York Times reported on Abscam, exposing the operation and opening it up to public debate on if this was considered entrapment. This effectively ended the operation. Mel and Evelyn were graciously paid for their efforts. Abscam led to new undercover regulations at the FBI, which went into effect on January 1981. Couldn't be because of all the government corrupt employees, could it? Cynthia Marie Weinberg, known as Marie to all who knew her, was in her 40s when the Abscam scandal broke. She remained devoted to Mel throughout the Abscam scandal. She even once sold her engagement ring to bail out Mel when he was arrested for fraud. Marie was unaware of Mel's affair with Evelyn even after the scandal broke. Mel moved Evelyn in near their family home, and Marie did eventually find out. And shortly after, Marie outed her husband to a reporter, claiming that he did, in fact, profit from the abscam. Marie was found hanged to death in 1982. It was ruled a suicide. Soon after Marie's death, Evelyn Knight and Mel Weinberg married. They divorced in 1988, and Weinberg was later paid $250,000 for the rights to this story. I'll tell you uh, some of the arrests and convictions here. So these are U.S. representatives, John Murphy, Frank Thompson, John Genret, Richard Kelly, Harrison A. Williams, who was a senator, Angelo Erichetti, who was the mayor of Camden, which we talked about. And there were several others, including local and state officials, that were also arrested and convicted. Also, Richard and Passato a New Jersey state assemblyman who was convicted of bribery and conspiracy in connection with Abscam. Michael Myers was a U.S. rep, but he was also expelled from Congress in regards to Sorry, who? (laughs) Yeah. He's that guy hanging outside chasing, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis all the time. Yeah, Um, yeah. And he's Randy, baby. Yeah. Uh, Just (laughs) cover it all. Uh, Frank Thompson Jr. was a U.S. rep. Richard Lettier and Lawrence Pressman was a Camden County freeholder director. Those are the convictions. Uh, there's a lot more there, but just thought we mentioned that. That's a lot of congressmen. You think Congress is dirty now. Oof. Back in the day, they were dirty or I don't know. Maybe maybe they just found their ways around and found the loopholes to not get caught. Maybe. That's, that's what I think is maybe it's just too corrupt where everybody is corrupt now and nobody gets convicted. <laughs> Very, well, very you know, possible. they had to set up all those laws to make sure they couldn't, you know, have stings put up against them, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right. So what do you guys think about this whole operation? Number one, do you do you consider it entrapment, this whole situation? Yeah, it, to, me, to, to to a degree, yes, it is. I mean, without sitting there and putting out the bait of, of you know, we, can, we need this done and if you're going to do it for us, then we'll pay you. Then, then yeah, that's, I mean, isn't that the definition of entrapment? I don't know. I mean, kind of, I guess. I I feel like it, you can still say I don't no. really know that it's entrapment because, and this is obviously just my perspective. Like they, they still made a choice to do it. It's not like they were, they were forced to do so. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you still, they had more power. To be able to say no. It's not hard to say no. No, we just we both just did it right now. Yeah. yeah. It's not hard. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Is it difficult I, for you? We yeah, sometimes. 
<laughs> he's got the yeah down, but he's yeah. not. He's working on the no. <laughs> I, I watched Yes Man one too many times, and now I'm just stuck. <laughs> oh, I think no is the most powerful <laughs> word in the English dictionary that too many people don't take advantage of. Uh, you can easily say no. If, if I were presented with that, hey, I'll give you a, whatever, $100,000, but you're going to have to commit a crime. I would just say, no, I'm good. You know, I'd be like, so you want me to break the law? Is that what you're asking me? Why would you have them clarify? No, because then you're putting it back on them. Like, th- then I feel like they have to reevaluate because real quick they're going to find, oh, this is not the one. <laughs> <laughs> Neo, this is not. You know, I mean, it just depends on the conversation because, oh, do you want me to break the law? Well, it's not really breaking the law, is it? You're a congressman. You could be able to do all this stuff. And it's not really that we're paying you for it. It's a donation to your funds. You know, they can sit there and just throw so many different flowery words at them until they're like, you know, yeah, you know. It's called a morals and values system. Yeah, and they're still wrong. I mean, it doesn't (laughs) matter how you dance around the fire. You're still getting burned, you know. I'm getting paid. All right. Well, we know where John stands. John's like, yeah, give me the money. <laughs> hypothetically, 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 I'm of getting course. paid. You know, I, yeah. I will be so dumb to be like, yeah, wait, hold on. Let me see. Can I can I do this? I don't know. It sounds pretty wrong. Yeah. But, you know, is it really wrong? You know, you put up a good, good argument. Give me the money. What's the argument? <laughs> if somebody could offer me like a really nice, like three bedroom, two bathroom house, and I didn't have to pay for it in this housing market. I I I might be more willing to because a hundred thousand dollars ain't going to do much for me. You can no, no, seventy five thousand. Ten million. I'm still not going to do it. You know, I you are. I'm, well, I mean, ten million. Let me spend ten million behind bars. You can go to another country, though. I just don't understand. You can why. buy an island. If you can't buy a house. <laughs> You but can't I'm saying if you have 10 island. million, if you have 10 million, you said you wouldn't even you do it for 10 million. Get for 10 million. Uh-huh. Dude, all you need is a little piece of it. Well, all you need is a little, little piece. piece would be op- operable. Yeah, that's possible for sure. And I mean, you could probably get it for like a couple mil. No, and you still got eight no, left. No. Yeah. That's, that's not, not how math works. Yeah. I, it is. 10 minus that's two. That's not how real estate works. Forget <laughs> math. Like math. Real estate and math have nothing in common. Fair right point. Now. Fair point. Oh, you're you're not kidding. You ain't get a circle with a palm tree leaf on it. Uh, <laughs> like a little piece of like just burgeoning out out from under the water. Oh yeah, that's a two million deal. I could stand on it. <laughs> so anyway, this is an interesting. It's an interesting scam. I do find it to be extremely racist <laughs> because they you know they call it ab scam. In reference to Arabian, uh, they're using someone that basically because people aren't as familiar with that culture and they know, but they know there's a lot of money over there. They're using that to manipulate people into trying to get in bed with them because they figure if they get a few bucks, they'll get a lot more bucks later. That's the whole idea, right? It's just, I think it is entrapment, but I'm okay with it because you could still say no. I'm actually okay with entrapment. You could still say no. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, if somebody was easily able to talk you into doing one thing, you're going to do other things. Oh, for sure. And honestly, that's a big pro- problem with Congress now. I mean, if you look at, oh my God, anybody that joins Congress poor never leaves poor. They always leave filthy rich. And that's a problem. <laughs> right. And they sure don't get paid that much no. to be able to get that wealthy. Don't get yeah. me wrong. You get a, a good living, 200 grand or whatever it is a year. But you should not be leaving a multi-million millionaire. That is wrong. And when they're all doing it, that's obviously a problem we have. We have people that are joining Congress to be famous and rich. They're not joining to help the country. It's a problem. Well, we're going to get all political. We don't want to do that. We're just Uh, talking about this story. (laughs) Well, you know, I mean, recently, uh, recently we got George, George Santos, who's been expelled. uh, And that was well worth it. Sure, but I mean, look at how long that took. Way too long. I the guy stole money. It's uh, it's obvious he stole. He's like, yeah, I stole it, <laughs> and everyone's like, um, it, let's yeah, give him a chance. Did he though? And he and like, well, he's saying he stole the money. No, yeah, I stole it. I I paid for OnlyFans <laughs> with it. I paid for my Ubers. <laughs> I paid for a whole bunch of stuff with it. It's fine. It's my money. I stole it fair and square. And they're like, you know, he should stay in office. There's an Illinois uh, governor who was uh, convicted, and then there were people who were like, yeah, let's bring this guy back. I'm like, what? That's, what? That's how we are now. 
What? That's how we are. <laughs> That's now. what you want? That's what you want? Well, apparently in the late seventies and early eighties, and they got prosecuted, they got prosecuted. They actually had to serve some time and you know. Isn't that wild? Because today, you know, when I look at this and I hear the story and, you know, you watch the movie and you all of that, you're like, yeah, surely they're not there's not going to be any convictions because today, at least I feel eh, there probably wouldn't be much conviction there. But to know that it was taken care of, business was taken care of back in the day. I'm like, dang, good for you guys. Good for business you guys. Business was taken care of back <laughs> in the day. Con artists were operating. They were working with the FBI. And they got had a little bit too. It wasn't great then. That's all I'm saying. It's it's just never been great. There's always been yeah. corruption because you yeah. have too much power mm-hmm. with a bunch of people that shouldn't have power like they have. It's it's just a deal though. It's saying like, hey, you did something super wrong, but super wrong, w- not just wrong, <laughs> not just super wrong. wrong. You it's- did something super wrong, uh, <laughs> and and. Uh, what is it? Two negatives make a positive, or whatever. So, like, let's just let's even this out. We'll we'll get some other bad guys, and in the end, the the ends justify the means, right? Like that's the whole theory behind it. Sure, yeah, that's why I said I'm okay. So it's with a matter children. of if you believe that philosophy, if you align with that, then you're probably cool with this. That's why I said I'm okay with entrapment. Because you could still say no if you're you can, right. you're basically getting a choice of what your consequences are. I don't know. I think that's kind of amazing. I would love for somebody to be like, you know, instead of you getting the speeding ticket, how about you just like serve two hours in like a food pantry serving the community? I'd be like, hell yeah, hell yeah, I will do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> I just I love the choices. I love the first scam. All right, the other ones, okay, fine, but. Like the initial scam that got them caught just boggles my mind. So people would reach out to them and, and they would say, yeah, I'll help you. And of course, you know, the, the no, no, no thing actually does work, works in dating too. (laughs) You know, the more you say no, the more interested people are and they're, they're trying to win you over. It's wild how, how people's minds work. But the idea that this wouldn't get around, other people wouldn't hear about this, that no one's actually ever getting a loan. They're all just paying the finder fee or the, the, um, uh, the initial fee. And they're just pocketing the money. That that's wild to me. Insane that people went for that for so long. Well, it goes to show you how the amount of uh, the lack of information that's being handed out back then. You know, you sure. don't have no internet. You don't have a Yelp page for the guy. You don't have a Google reviews for <laughs> Yelp, the guy. <laughs> Yelp page loans never come through. One star. Yeah, you know I. And you don't you don't have a Facebook group where people were like, "Hey, did you guys ever go to try to get a loan for these guys? Because I gave them the money, but they they came back and you know that's that's what they said to me too. That's what they said to me too. Me too. Me too. You know, it's just crazy. Well, and I love the fact that in the movie she pretends to be English, but in real life she actually was English. Just. It's a very weird choice. I assume it's because, wait, we got Amy Adams. She's a fantastic actress. So we're going to have to, she, we don't want to have to keep her in a British accent the whole movie. And then we, right. well, we have to explain why she has, her accent isn't actually a, an English accent or why it keeps slipping. Sure. Well, just do the Van Damme thing, you know, for the Van Damme from the 80s. Just, uh, you know, he was from France and he just came here and now he's got citizenship. Oh, I was English, but I was born here, and then I came went to England, and then I came back here at an early age, and that's what that oh, counts as complicated. You're right. This yeah. is better. This makes more sense. <laughs> this is better. Yeah. I just and and for people to be fooled by you know what we just throw lady on the front. Oh well, now she's a dignitary. <laughs> what? That's all it takes. All right. I'll, I'm Sir Aaron. How you doing? It does make you seem more esteemed and revered. Wait, hold so. on a second. I got an idea. Uh, Sir Aaron, uh, do we have a Patreon that you can you can promote? Mm-hmm. Yeah, patreon.com slash the Hollywood Outsider. But I am not putting on an offensive uh, towel on my head. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. We didn't have to do the towel. You can do a fake e- English accent, Sir Aaron. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Keep going. <laughs> Hello, Gavna. Hello. Oh, would you give your money? You know. <laughs> Hello, puppet. This is almost working. <laughs> Hello, puppet. This is terrible. This is very, this is, very. This is a terrible, terrible ad. Yeah, this is a, this is totally the worst. And there's a, you know, what's actually funny. We now just that I think lost about it. money on our Patreon, right? Is people what I are asking for refunds at this point. <laughs> you know, what's really funny is Amy Adams 
is <laughs> is American, uh, mm-hmm. has an American accent, pretends to be English, and her accent keeps slipping throughout the whole thing. But that's it how does. they explain it. Yep. Christian Bale actually English and has a New Jersey accent the entirety of the movie. I know. <laughs> that is pretty good. They're all great actors. Everybody in this movie is, is, is a great actor. You're right. That is that is kind of interesting that they yeah. made that choice. Her accent does slip because there, there is, and we can segue into talk. We're talking about the, the case and the movie now. We're kind of blurring the lines a little bit. But throughout, when she's talking to Bradley Cooper, up until she confesses that she's not really from England, the idea is that every time he, she talks to him, she's supposed to be talking to him with an English accent, and it does not happen at all no. times. It yeah. slips so much. When they're at the disco, and they're uh, basically, they're going to do it in the bathroom stall, but not really do it, but going to do it, and I, you know, whatever. Uh, that was supposed to be, she's going to maintain her English accent, and throughout that whole scene, I don't think she maintained it once. Nope. Still got the Oscar nomination. That's how good she is. Yeah, that's mean that she is pretty amazing. However, I do not blame him in that scene for not being able to notice that she, the accent kept. If I was a human being or human male in that in that bathroom stall and the woman's accent kept slipping, I would not even consider it. I would be. I mean, like, whoa, 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 whoa. stop. This is where I have morals. All right, forget the fact that I'm in the women's bathroom and I've shut the door and I'm willing to do this in front of 45 women. The accent is not right. We got to talk about this. And then we have a conversation. That's how I would do it. Very moral, upstanding, if you will. Um, Amanda, can we get a ruling on this on whether or not Adam, uh, not Adam, Aaron yeah. would be able to. That's my, Sir Adam. That's my. Sir Adam. That's my con artist name. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> like, I'm hearing the words Sir Adam is saying, and yet I don't believe them. I, I don't believe them just because they're coming out of his mouth. Right. Really. Because he just conned us, and he told us he was conning us. Right. <laughs> he said, "This is I'm going to pretend to be Adam, Sir Adam." I should do that from now on. I should, I'm going to introduce myself as Adam and see how long till people actually listen to this episode and understand why. Mm. Like, is that a new <laughs> dude? Go. Is that a totally new dude? <laughs> he sounds like Aaron, but he's got a. But he's way cooler. Hello, puppet. When he's, uh... <laughs> is that the only thing you can <laughs> That's say? That's all I know. Yeah. How to say. That's all. Hello, That's like... crumpet. Hey. Uh, We've lost every I can single do an Australian UK accent. listener. I can yeah. do an Australian accent if you really want. Or I might. That, n- no. It was good until the very end. No. Yeah. I was feeling very Jason Statham until the end. <laughs> Who's not Australian. Who's not Australian. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Welcome to Accent Talk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you guys like what was done to Carmine in the movie? And it should be pointed out that the actual politician, Angelo, was... He was not doing this to help just New Jersey. He was he was a very greedy man. He was trying to get rich. So this is something that he was trying to do. The movie, of course, makes everyone look positive. All the bad people look great. All the good people look awful. It's interesting how this was framed. That's part of the the mental illness that we're kind of seeing in this whole thing, where these people think they're actually robin hood stealing from the rich and uh giving to the poor and they're doing something great I mean, that's that's the whole aspect of it mm-hmm. you've got you've got people who are actually trying to do good things like lewis's ck character or the the lawyer uh, what was he the attorney general and they're they both look kind of like dopey morons where you got uh all, everybody else is amazing right yeah Weird way to take it, because we're supposed to be rooting for the worst people in the room. Isn't that kind of what makes it fun, though? Kind of, yeah, because people love to root for the bad guy. That's the funny part, right? Uh, us as a culture, we don't want to ever be robbed. If this, if we were the people that were being took for that money, especially those the early scams, we would be pissed, we'd be livid, because we would be out that money, and those are desperate people. They're totally taking advantage of them. But yet, because this movie paints them as Robin Hood, if you will, it's okay, it's fun. It's not, yeah. it's not fun. It's ruining people's livelihoods. It's what they were doing mm-hmm. is destroying people's lives. Yeah. It's hard to sit there and look at these characters and, and really think, am I, would I, would I want to be around these people? But they made them so freaking cool. They made them so cool that they, that you can't as a viewer not want to hang out with them. Even, even with Christian Bale's amazing comb over, he still looked like somebody that you can, you can be on the side of. 
the way they painted his the relationship between him and his wife, the way he they painted the relationship with him and his son, it's all kind of weird because they make her look like. Ooh, well, that's not even. I mean, Amanda, go ahead and take the floor on what they make her uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character look like. Oh, just I mean the traditional crazy girl, right? right. Like the she's she's overreacting. She's dramatic. Why is she always like this? And it's like, yeah, dude, because. She knows that you're being like filthy. You're a filthy lion muggle. And here muggle? we are. Is he, this is Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blending worlds. Leave me alone. But I mean, that is that is definitely a frustrating part. So on the page, I think the character is written to be where you should root against her completely. I think Jennifer Lawrence elevates that to a place where at least I feel I can understand where the character is coming from at most times. I can. I can personally. Because can we frame it correctly? Like the guy is constantly lying to her. He's been He's hiding, he's there's hiding. Constantly gaslighter, cheating. gaslighting cheating. Yeah, very yeah. Mu- very much. He's got a girl on the side. He's got all this mm-hmm. other stuff going down. And you know, then he's she sees the the his hua at the <laughs> at the event and so he's bringing her to dinner with her there. And I mean the, all that stuff, that's just you're waiting for an explosion with that. And he tried to get her to not go. And that that's like the whole thing, too, where it's like, you didn't want her to go. Mm-hmm. And then she finds out why you didn't want her to go, rather than not wanting your whore to not go. And <laughs> yeah, so I can I would be crazy, too. Well, I mean, not anymore. Now I'd just be like, fuck you, I'm out. But <laughs> most most women that are like, I mean, that's if you're... If that's the first experience you have where you get to be crazy, everybody has one of those times where you're a little crazy over someone. Oh, boy. And and that was just that was hers. But it was was a justifiable for sure. I do love the whole conversation she has with with him about because of what she did, which nearly got him killed. He has a, has this epiphany of how to get them out of it. And really, it's all thanks to her. I really I, love, I, love, I really that. love that. I love that turn. I've definitely had relationships where that happened i'm like wait how do we how do we get back to you're the hero what like uh wait a minute i have to thank you for the fact that i went through a very traumatic experience Mm -hmm. (laughs) to be then made my made a better decision because of what you did to almost destroy me are you kidding me and you know what the craziest part of all of that there and i know we're kind of jumping because we were talking about carmine and everything but Mm -hmm. The craziest part about their relationship, their marriage, is he held on just so that way he didn't lose time with his son, supposedly. If he would have just communicated, she probably would have been more likely to be like, yeah, I want to be out too. Like, if you're out sleeping with this woman and you don't want to be with me, in the end, Mm -hmm. they, they ended up in the same place. They could have avoided a whole lot of mess and maybe not have even gotten as wrapped up into this situation as they did because she kind of, she did kind of blow things up a little bit more. Let's be honest. I don't blame um, her. She was fine. Like I don't blame he, he's her. Basically, she, she needed to vent to somebody. Yeah. Okay. She needed a friend. She needed a pal, but but they frame it so much like oh, we're, we're supposed to be mad at her because she got this, this Gambino <laughs> that she's hooked up with this guy. Why? He's been with Amy Adams for most of the movie. Why are we upset? Right. I don't, I, well, I don't think anyone was. I don't think they. I, I think didn't they interpret it, it as. Way. I think they painted. I it felt that. they painted it the way of she. It wasn't that she was sleeping with him or that she was like having this intimacy with him. It was that it resulted in him getting wrapped up. And as as an audience member, you're like, "Damn, girl, why'd you do that?" But she doesn't. She knew, but she didn't know to the to that extent. Oh yes, yeah, and did. it's also it's her right. I think she knew. It's her right. You know, like. I, I don't know. Have I ever wanted? No, no, no. Hypothetically, would I ever <laughs> want someone to to have a hit put out on them? Uh, not a hit. Uh, beat beat up. She wanted to okay. beat, beat it up. It was close enough. Yeah. Close right. enough. You know, you've 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 maybe considered that when you're feeling those emotions, right? So she knew exactly who she was talking to, and you and everyone knows. Even especially back then, everyone knows that you do not mention the feds to somebody who's in the mafia. You know, yeah, you, don't, yeah. you don't mention it, especially back then. You really don't mention it. So she knew exactly what that she was, was doing. That was politics and religion back in the day. <laughs> it was feds and mafia. 
Yeah, exactly. You don't mention the feds to mafia. So that so she knew she knew what she was doing. But the other thing is about her that I really love was the she blows up the 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 microwave and it's like she can't just be like, yeah, my bad. It's well, I did us all a favor because there's an article right here where it takes out <laughs> takes out all nutrition from the food. All nutrition is gone. Nothing of no nutritional value whatsoever. It just destroys and, and she just can't be like I effed up. It has to be like, I did us all a favor. She played it well. God, I forgot how big those microwaves were back at that. Oh my God, they were massive. And she did play it well. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence in this, she deserved to be nominated. She was, yeah. She steals the show whenever she is on the screen. She does, absolutely. Even Amy Adams, who holds her own against most of Hollywood, cannot hold her own against Jennifer Lawrence. Well, at the beginning, she was not holding her own because her accent went like four different ways from Sunday. Her accent was all over the place and it was driving me nuts. I'm like, pick one. <laughs> Let's be consistent and pick one. So I know where we're at. Well, <laughs> it, it, you know, I, th- I love it when she finally drops the facade to the, to the FBI guy. He's like, wait a minute, you're not English. I'm like no shit. He hasn't been paying attention at all time. That's that perm really driving him nuts. Yeah, I think Bradley Cooper's uh, Richie DeMasso was an interesting character to begin with. And we should say, um, Richie's character was an, was a collision of different FBI agents. It's not based off just one FBI agent. There was no love triangle between any of the agents. And uh, I kind of wish there wasn't. Yeah, I think it actually hurts the film a little bit because I, I think it's a little silly, you know. But they're trying to, to do that whole thing where that we're going to get the best over you, right? That's the whole idea. We're going to pull the wool over your eyes. The con, it's Ocean's Eleven. We're going to come right. out ahead at the end. Ocean's Eleven, except they're affecting, to begin with, normal people who are just right. desperate to make ends meet, and we're supposed to be rooting for them at that time, too. I really did love when Richie starts making fun of uh, Stoddard. Uh, you know, Stoddard just can't Louis be happy. CK. Yeah. He's making fun of him on the couch. I'm very, very happy uh, with Louis C.K. getting his face punch for the phone and ridden like Walmart <laughs> cowboy in front of his peers. I thought that it was It is okay. a great reflection it is. for today. You know, <laughs> it's a great way to revisit that. I'm like, oh, it's not so fun, is it? <laughs> I do totally get and appreciate how the FBI is. They're, they're just ignoring the fact that he just beat the shit out of his boss because he might get a big collar. No, they're cool with that. You know, that's mm-hmm. you could do that sort of thing. I mean, one of these days I might just beat the shit out of you just because I think we're going to do something cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm placing bets on this fight. <laughs> I'm collecting Amanda at the HollywoodOutsider.com. There you Thank go. You. you go ahead. Uh, one one FBI agent in particular that Richie was based on was Tony Amoroso. But again, it was a, con- a collection of agents. It really wasn't just one. It was just you know, that's how, how they usually do it in anything that's inspired by a true story is there's so many people involved. So they make one person that reflects the bureau you know mm-hmm. very very much like tom hanks's character in catch me if you can yeah yeah there's a connection to one character but mo- but really it's just covering a lot of characters at once. right where in catch me if you can tom hanks character is appreciated and he's a good guy all that other stuff mm-hmm. richie damaso is one of those characters where you're like uh no <laughs> you hate him the whole movie Oh, oh yeah, movie. he's he's just smarmy and gross the entire time. He's having dinner with his with his fiance and his mom, and Amy Adams calls. He's like, "What? What fiance? I don't have a fiance." She's literally asking him to do shit in the background, and great. she's like, "Oh, really?" And there, but let's also accept the fact that Amy Adams' character is just as smarmy. She was like, "Let's meet up." Let's I I well, hear her. She was playing. She was playing them. She well, was, but when they went to the bathroom stall, she didn't that seemed like she was ready to go. She was she was definitely she ready was to up go. until a point and then she was like, you know what? No, let's But she was gonna. I mean, until he stopped. He stopped first if you go watch that scene again. Mm-hmm. So so really So was she really playing here? him at that time? Like that's where it gets really confusing. And that's why I don't like the love triangle. I just don't think it works. Yep. Right. I don't, I don't either. I think that this movie would have been so much better had they not incorporated that into it because it also just it becomes this like really messy that uh that little meme of what's his face with all of the pictures and he's got the red string trying to connect all the dots and shit. I'm like, this is how my brain felt. Charlie Charlie Day. Day. (laughs) Charlie Day. Thank you. Yes. 
That's how I felt. I was like, my brain is going all over the place. Can you just pick a lover? Can everybody just pick one person? It was the and 70s. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Uh, swinging was definitely in. So what do we think about the relationship between Christian Bale's Irving and Amy Adams' Sydney? Do, do, are we fans of the relationship there and how that worked? Because apparently in the, in the real world, in the true story, they were very much a couple and apparently got married very quickly after Marie died, the original Rosalind. I kind of I kind of like their dynamic. Theirs feels a little bit more authentic and it feels more Bonnie and Clyde type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I can I can more champion that. And yeah, yeah, that's just kind of the way I feel about it. Because when you look at his relationship with uh Rosalind, it's like you neither one of you really want to be here. Mm-hmm. Whereas Oh, that's just like marriage, Sydney, Amanda. Just so you know I'm <laughs> Oh, I know. Uh, But no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But for Sydney, (laughs) it it felt like there was some more like genuine interest in each other and and care for one another and things like that. And they held each other to a higher standard in some ways. And so I had a little bit more affection for their dynamic. I feel like they painted them very beautifully, you know, even with Christian Bale trying trying his best to have the world's worst dad bod and the world's worst comb over. It's still Christian Bale and there's still like a an air of like arrogance and sexiness to him that kind of gets through all that very well. And the two of them together are very much like this beauty and the beast aspect where you you have these moments in where like the whole scene inside the carousel at the dry cleaners was kind of a pretty pretty scene and the way they 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 painted it and the way he went back and reflected on that scene when she when he didn't have her with him like made the feel like real love even though these people can't possibly feel real love for each other um you know it made it feel like it was something real and there's i guess a definitely a beauty in that uh, i i do want to also shout out Jeremy Renner as Mayor Carmine Polito. Oh, yeah. He he did a wonderful performance, and he is kind of a douchebag in real life. Sorry, guy. But not in Jeremy Renner, the actual politician. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, this man just got his body crushed, and you're going to go with no. this terrible no, person. No, no. The last time we talked about his body being crushed, you were like, he's stupid. And now you're he like. Wa- okay, he was stupid, but does that make him like a really terrible person? You, no, he just made a really I, dumb mistake. I just want you to pick a lane, damn it. The last I, time- I'm still in the same lane. You just want me to be in a lane that I'm not in. She that said isn't- he made a dumb choice. I'm sure he yeah. even would say he probably made a dumb he choice did. at the time. So he was trying he to save a life, okay? Was he? <laughs> We're not going to get into this yeah. debate again. That's God. a weird debate. God anyway, he's very good in this, and the actual mayor was a douchebag. This <laughs> Jeremy Renner's I was character. Like, what did I miss? Yeah. Jeremy <laughs> Renner's performance really, even though you, you know he's dirty and he's doing dirty things, you're constantly on his side. Elizabeth Rome, as his wife, did a wonderful job, too. I mean, oh, she was. Constantly on great. Side. Oh, she even went and got the nail polish, man. Like, yeah. That was that's next level lady love. Like that is that is sister friendship right there. I I didn't even realize that. I mean, this is the first time I looked at the INDB and I was like, oh my god, that it was Elizabeth Rome because I never could place her. I was like, who is that? I know that face, and finally, I'm like, I'm okay with it now uh, because it's great. I, that's I'm glad one of those you're act- okay with it because what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say that she's one of those actors who's just gotten who just she, she should have been bigger than she ever really was. Yeah, she's very talented. She was this. She was great in this. She's, she was. Yeah. She, was, she, was, good. She, was I, she was good. Great. Great feels like a stretch. Yeah, let's, but let's dial it down a little bit. She was. She good. didn't have enough to do to be great. There Let you me go. say that. There you she go. was good in what she was given. She didn't even have an opportunity to be great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what the movie got right and then did it respect the, the victims. I do want to point out. Payments never happened at the plaza. Uh, they were lesser hotels or properties that the FBI owned. So that's something that they got very, very wrong that they just did to to jazz up the movie. Was was the Carmine deal legitimate? Uh, you know, that was kind of what they were doing, very similar to the, in the real case. Was that right, though? Like, ultimately, when you're talking about the respect of victims, was it right the way that this whole thing played out? Should these people have really been convicted? Did they really deserve to go to prison i think we've already talked about it and i would say yes yeah 
I think overall we agree that they should have gone to prison. Whether or not I was entrapment, it's I yeah. Mean, that, that's just a fancy word for saying you, you guys tricked me into doing crime. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not allowed to trick me into doing crime. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we tricked you into doing crime once, you're likely you going to do it again. If you me, of course I'm going to say yes. It's yeah. not my That's fault. That's not my fault. It's, it's not my fault the snake said, eat the fruit. It's not my fault at all. <laughs> it's not my fault that that woman got into my car when I pulled up on the side of the road. That wasn't my... I didn't... I was tempted. She opened the door. She opened the door. You know? she, opened she, the door. <laughs> she opened her own door. <laughs> You know, it's not my fault the, the microwave busted when I put metal inside of it and everything said, don't put metal inside of it. You should have been here to not let me do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Accountability, guys. Absolutely. I want to come back. I wanted to come back to this, right? So the whole Roslyn and Marie situation. When you have a, a person in real life. Now, I, I, I understand. names were All the names in this movie were changed because they wanted to do their own spin on this story understood but the real Rosalind, who was marie uh, weinberg had a very very kind of tragic life right she was humiliated her husband uh humiliated her repeatedly lied to her repeatedly was having an affair the whole time they were married uh, which happens i mean that happens in, in a lot of marriages i'm not yeah sounds picky. like a marriage to me <laughs> moved her in the the uh, affair the mistress moved her just down the street from their family home. So it's easier. Well, access. yeah, I was going to say that's you got to conserve, right? Like, oh, God. And then she <laughs> hangs herself shortly after he gives an interview or where, where she basically outs him as stealing money from this whole operation. Man, I don't know. Like at some point, that's where I put. And we've talked about this in previous episodes, right? When you have real people and there's real trauma there. That's where I think it's not so okay to basically uh, humiliate their character on film as well. Once you hear the real story, I don't like how they, I already didn't like how they treated Jennifer Lawrence's character because I felt like it was pretty one note. But once you hear like the real story of the real wife and what she went through, I really don't like how they handled Rosalind's character. Even though it wasn't a carbon copy, you know, even though this wasn't, it's supposed to be based on a true story. It's inspired. I get all that. I understand, but it's it's pretty close. And yeah, anybody on board with this, or that you think I'm wrong? What I would say, if you take out the love triangle, it solves so many problems, and then you get to make her character more authentic to who she was. I guess if you just don't focus as much on that mess. Well, well, the love triangle. With those three were real. So that was real, except she didn't know about Sid or Evelyn, as it were. So she didn't actually know about the affair until, you know, the end or whatever. But there was. I know, which, a- but, it, but that cause, uh, causes all of the drama in this movie where it takes the focus away. But in terms of, well, I guess, Well, the Bradley back Cooper your- triangle, there's two love triangles. There's, there's I know, uh, I know. more like a rectangle or something. <laughs> 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 Christian Bale, for being as hideous as he is in this movie, uh, he's a very handsome guy in real life. Guy has a lot of love triangles. I think the Rosalind story needed to be in there because it does flesh out Christian Bale's character a bit more. And it does give him uh, as to why he just doesn't pick up sticks and move on or anything else like that. It does make it more obvious. And without that whole moment of where she takes the credit of of pushing him over the edge to make him figure out how he can get out of all of this with him and Esther or Sydney in the process. Edith. Edith. That's what Lady Edith. Um, <laughs> I was like, how many old lady names are we going to use here? Like old grandmas. <laughs> I'm sure give all of them without her to be the fulcrum point for the story to kind of go over the edge and get to the get to the part where we're going back down from the climax. You don't have a lot. I don't see anything else in the story that would have created the same sort of impact as Rosalind's story. So that's why I think it is necessary to have her in there. Uh, it, we're just blessed with the idea that it was Jennifer Lawrence and she was as uh, as enjoyable on the screen as she was. That little white dress, though. Definitely, definitely thankful that she was in this movie. I have no that. problem with anything that anyone wore. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing with anything that any of the, the ladies in the movie wore, because yeah. my God. The ladies did you. great. The guys, <laughs> on the other hand, that was something else. Still, you know, overall, though, costume design and like set design and all of that was really beautiful in this movie. It was a beautifully shot note. movie. Absolutely. 
but you're really not answering my question, John. Like my question is great. Rosalind's in the movie. I understand. But don't you find it to be kind of a real slap in the face to the real person, the way that they presented the character, almost like she's the typical wife that's going to ruin everything. She's Joe she's Pesci. She's crazy. She's frazzled. She's, exactly. you know, diabolical. Every she's stereotype. manipulative. But, and I think the the frustration, and, I, and I'm and i going to just give John an opportunity to think through his thoughts, but. Um, <laughs> she's going to woman's point this shit to you. No, 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 no. It's just really just my perspective. The thing that kind of frustrates me about it is we get such a perspective on the way she's acting, but the way it's written, we don't get the reverse. We don't get to feel like they're leading us to also understanding where she's coming from. And that, I think, is my frustration with the way her character is written. Mm -hmm. Because she is just that. And it is one of the the things that is grinds my gears gets under my skin is when people are like god she's so crazy and i'm like yeah what'd you do though <laughs> douchebag like you were probably lying so, to her and sometimes. sneaking around and like a, a, often often I've, not always I've dated crazy not always just saying dated crazy they sometimes we've just all go dated crazy. crazy who are just crazy but especially in this situation especially in the situation they're making her seem like she is crazy and yeah, paranoid yeah. for no reason and there's every single reason and and i think for me it's like at what point do we get to have the perspective or the viewpoint where we can acknowledge yeah he, and they can make the audience feel yeah he's doing some really crappy stuff and poor her because we get so much focus on amy adams and christian bale that She's just the crazy girl. She's just the one standing there, you know, listening to the phone call where it's like, well, because you're trying to get her to not go to something and she's trying to figure out why everyone else wants her to go except for you. Absolutely. And we do have to acknowledge that this is being told from Christian Bale's perspective, right? Yep, so yep, yep. the movie is being you know, narrated and whatnot from from his perspective. It's a very unreliable narrator scenario. And even, you know, Mel Weinberg, who sold his rights to his story, is an unreliable narrator because it's all one-sided. And it's one-sided from someone who literally lies all the time. He was a con artist. It's not the most reliable narrator. So we have to acknowledge that. Okay. So I, what I will say about this is that they tried to do her a solid by giving her a better outcome than she actually had at the end by she kind of gets her own happy ending. They They do it with like, in in a crappy manner because they she still talks about a situation in which she will not take accountability for with this car accident and why she's wearing a neck brace and all this other stuff uh they do that person dirty by the way they they represent jennifer uh represent her with rosalind i don't know if i can have a problem with it because i can't find another way to make the story work without her oh i could you just make her uh, a more relatable person and we understand where she's coming from more as opposed to, well, she's just nuts. Is she though? I mean, even Amy Adams, when she's talking to her, approaches her basically like she's crazy. Like you're the Hawa. <laughs> I mean, at some point, like you got to understand, even in her perspective, she has to understand where she's coming from in that respect. You know what I mean? That just boggles my mind. Eh, it's a writing thing. It's just yeah, a thing. You're the mistress. Yep. I do love that scene where they get, they, they're finally face to face and she's like, I know who you are. I know who you are. I just, I just love how we keep making fun of her accent. And her accent is the only one that holds up the entire film, by the way. Well, hers and Christian Bale's. Yeah, Chris, yeah I, I yeah. just don't know what Christian Bale's accent really is. He doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> it's like made up Jersey. It's not real Jersey. It's made up Jersey. Well, like an English accent here in the States is really an English accent. No, it's Fair. a made up English accent. Fair. <laughs> Bradley Cooper with rollers. Sorry. Uh, it was all over the place. All right. I do. I want to picture. I want to see that. I want to see him sitting in front of one of those like desk mirrors with his curler, his rollers in his hair. Like, I just want that. <laughs> I just remember when guys had perms. <laughs> that's funny. It's I don't happening remember again that, right though. now. Oh, no, 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 no. Bad. Let's take that out. Mullets and perms and comb overs. These are all not good choices. Do you like having sex? <laughs> don't do this. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. What would you have done differently? Is there anything, Amanda, what would you have done differently with the movie? Anything or were you to left it the way it is? I, 
I kind of call I kind of called mine out. Yeah. You know the the other love triangle. It, it it's too much romance and like people going behind each other's backs. Like there's enough conning going on in the movie that it it just felt overwhelming. I guess. Mm-hmm. And so I think that would have been my biggest change. And and I think to your point, Aaron, also the way that her character was represented, Rosalind's. Yeah, I would agree with both of those. Uh, find a better way to represent Rosalind uh, and get rid of the, the second love triangle. I mean, I know it's the 70s and everyone was banging everybody, but we don't need that much. I would agree with that as well. It's kind of like it has the Ocean's Eleven effect where I right. do think the Julia Roberts angle, you know, gave the movie some purpose. I didn't need it. It didn't make the right. movie any better. You know, it, I want to, it's all about the cons, right? That's why you're watching it. You love the con. You want to see that unravel. And it was just kind of, every time you had the thing with Bradley Cooper and Amy Adams, though they're both extremely wonderful actors, they both are, literally. Uh, even though Bradley Cooper got robbed of a nomination for some reason, I thought he was great mm-hmm. in this movie. The story kind of grinds to a halt. With yeah, them. the story grinds to a halt whenever those two are, when they have their moment where he shows up and he's like, I'm going to do it. And she confesses everything. <laughs> Do we need that? Not really. I, no. I just feel like it didn't really add anything to the movie. And it kind of, uh, I'm at that point, just looking at my watch going, when are we done with these two? Like, let's move on. Even in that moment, he's still like, uh, I still want to bang you. Uh, so that's. Well, that's just being a dude. <laughs> Super. Yes. 100%. So stereotype. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Oh, I love you. Let's. Fu- <laughs> what? How did we get here? Because 20 seconds ago, all you cared about was an N.U.T. <laughs> what just happened what i did spell that out because i wasn't sure if that was appropriate or not <laughs> what none of that was appropriate and you still did everything else yeah Jesus. one more thing we could add to this movie to make it better is more moments and where it's lewis ck is getting a telephone to the face <laughs> yeah <laughs> Agreed. Also, I love how much of like a little like that whole sequence <laughs> just like is so funny to me where it he's like, I'm making a statement. I'm going to get this guy. You know, you come for me. I'm going to come for you. And then it's, oh, that's a great idea. You know, I'm really glad you grabbed that telephone and smacked him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> David O. Russell, I think he's very uh, Louis C.K.-ish in this movie anyway, in terms of in real life. Because I remember, didn't George Clooney beat the shit out of him in Three Kings at one point? Like, they got in a fist fight. It's possible. He's a very um, combative director at times. We'll have to cover that one at some point. But that's it for this episode. So if you enjoyed this podcast, share the show on your social media outlets. Please, please, please give us a review in your favorite podcast app, whatever you use, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is. Everybody has a different app. Please give us a review and share it with your friends. That's how people find this show. You're the best source of promotion, so please tell those those true crime or movie fans about it. And thank you for listening to Inspired by a True Story. Now let's keep those con artists honest. Speaking of con artists, do you want to have Sir Adam uh, close us out? <laughs> uh, no, let's keep those con artists. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. This was completely different. <laughs> yeah, it's do it. All of us. This all is us. Sir Allen. <laughs> this is a different one now. Hello, puppet. Keep those cold artists honest, eh? <laughs>